So, now I want to show you uh, different kinds of views of the body and then in the end I will try to explain the model of uh, either off in using the body in walking and how it combines or how it integrates with the model of the biotensegrity. So, what do we see usually? We see things like this. You see I'm now leaning through one leg and that's a very common thing to, th to see. Uh, the other judges saw a woman just speaking on the phone like that. Well, common use of the body, not quite using the central line. Now, I want to show you on, in walking, what do we see? So, the first thing we usually see, well, not always, but sometimes, the pelvis being thrown forward in the walk. And, of course, the upper back must go backwards. So, you see this kind of walk. Yeah. And uh, when it's a, uh, sometimes when it becomes worse or different, it can be also a little bit jumpy or like this even more. Yeah. There are many kinds of jumpy walking like this. You know, I think my own walk used to be something like that. I don't want to show you the model's walk, which is coming out from that. Let's leave it now and we'll go to another walk that is a little bit more depressing, this kind of uh, use of the body. The shoulders are coming forward and dropping down and the head is coming a lot forward but in the first stage of the depressed walking the head is still up. So it shows that we still have a lot of energy in the head still uh, being in life, still working in life, still relating to, to, to outside but not very much in the feelings. And the worst part of that one is when also the head goes down and then the walk will be even much uh, smaller and, uh, and it really shows it being detached from life. Like it's too scary, too frightening, too difficult to meet life. And let's go to the opposite. Where do we, see? we find this one? The one that really wants to meet life as if he has a lot of brave and it shows all in the chest area and I say it's as if because it's a little bit disconnected from the ground it's everything is concentrated in the chest and not so much in the relationship to the ground yeah? and from that one let's go to the last one to the duck uh, way of walking when the, the, the legs are turning very much out so there is a lot of contraction in the buttocks and something like this. Yeah. So all these styles of walk you, sh you see and uh, very much not using the central line of the body, not really relating to gravity in the optimum way. So what Eilwolf is offering is a use of the central line as the place from, which, from where the movement should originate. And we have a very special muscle right there in the middle that connects the spine to the leg, to the inner side of the leg. And when this muscle is starting a walk, it looks like this, it means that the muscle that is taking my leg forward will be that inner muscle that connects the spine to the leg. And it will do that while keeping the lower back backwards and <coughs> the knee is coming forward. The only thing is that this muscle cannot really work just alone by itself. It must have an aid from another part of the body and this is the foot. It's when the foot is pushing the ground backwards that that muscle, the psoas muscle, can really operate properly. And what happens is that when the foot is pushing the ground backwards then there is created a sort of tension in the body that flows up all the way. And this is how it connects to the beard consecrity model. Because the beard consecrity model is speaking about tension being spread all over the structure and being relating to the gravity or to the earth that supports the weight uh, as a unit, as a f one unit rather than parts. So see what happens when I am relating like this to, to the earth and gravity, then I am a one unit that is working uh, upon the earth and any movement that I'm doing it's the whole unit that does it rather than different parts. Okay? So that's the uh, 
the integration of the models of either love and the built-in sanctity model. 